Good afternoon, Tokes. Well, it does seem like the Prime Minister is not budging. She had a series of meetings yesterday with politicians from across the political spectrum and her own party. Now, the ones from her own party that she met from the ERG group, the uh, sort of hardcore Brexiteers, they posted a picture saying that they had found the meeting constructive. But other politicians from, oppos uh, from opposing parties who had met the Prime Minister here in number 10 Downing Street and other government ministers in the Cabinet Office, well, they came away from the talk saying that the Prime Minister wasn't in a listening mode, that she was sticking to the script, essentially that she was still the Maybot. She wasn't budging and she didn't seem to realise now the reality that her deal was still so deeply popular it's unlikely to get through. So the Prime Minister is going to go away for the weekend to Chequers, her countryside residence. She will then think about her plans and come back on Monday and announce her Plan B. Now, what we're expecting is that Plan B will merely be Plan a, her withdrawal agreement, possibly with whatever tiny changes she can get from Brussels on the, uh, not the withdrawal agreement itself, but the future intentions document, then she will take it back to the House of Commons for a vote on the 29th of January. But we know from earlier in the week she had that historic defeat, over 400 MPs for the first time taking down a government. To try and win that many people back over the line is going to be incredibly difficult and she doesn't seem to be budging. Jeremy Corbyn yesterday refused again to meet with the Prime Minister saying that until no deal was off the table he wouldn't do it and even told his MPs not to meet with the government though some of them like Yvette Cooper and Hilary Benn did defy that order to talk to uh, we think uh, the likes of Michael Gove uh, the uh, Environment Secretary about possibly switching to the Norway plan. Now, amidst all these machinations, uh, her former Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson is giving a major speech today. What can we expect from him? That's right. Well, Boris Johnson is a man who has always wanted to be behind the door of number 10 Downing Street. You have to interpret his career, his political moves as all trying to lead into going into that building there. And he had a moment in 2016 where he ran for the leadership, but then sort of disappeared. He uh, then was sort of stabbed in the back, some say, by Michael Gove, who then stood against him. And one very senior MP I spoke to earlier this week said, really, that was the moment where the sort of hardcore Brexiteer lost control of this process because they were sort of not ready for the start of it, what happened, and we all know Theresa May then came into power. Now, Boris Johnson was made her foreign secretary, but he was kept quite far away from Brexit. That was left to David Davis, the first Brexit secretary, and then trade, that was taken up by Liam Fox, another Brexiteer. But Boris Johnson, since he resigned from government over Theresa May's checkers plan, which then became this withdrawal agreement, he has been pretty noisy. He's criticised the Prime Minister and her plan in Parliament and every week in his Telegraph column. And then today he's gone and made this speech, which is uh, happening around now. He's gone to the JCB factory in the north of England. Its owner uh, is, a bit, is a big Tory supporter and a big Brexiteer as well. So it's interesting he's allowed Boris Johnson into that factory where David Cameron used to make speeches as well. And it's basically a wide ranging speech, which in British political terms is code for my pitch for prime minister. He's talking taxation, devolution, healthcare issues, some Brexit as well, but he's trying to portray himself as a leader in waiting. Vincent.